crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of the women. This is Conan the Barbarian, and unfortunately, uh, so is this. I'm sorry about what happened the last time. And then there's also this movie. Remember me? Who are you? I'm the one who made you pretty. Since the meteoric rise of Conan in the 80s, there's been repeated attempts at resurrecting the barbarian who would be king. And yet, they've all failed in one way or another. I live, I love, I slay, and I am content. First appearing in the Weird Tales magazine short story People of the Dark from 1931, it wasn't until the reprints of the Robert E. Howard novels with Frank Frazetta cover paintings and the Roy Thomas Marvel comics that Conan truly reached cultural prominence. Off the back of these two creative sojourns, John Milius and Oliver Stone wrote a film adaptation. The feature was positioned to copy James Bond, launch a franchise and adapt one book a year until you run out of books. In fact, the first film ends with a coda, a flash forward of an older King Conan. However, the would-be franchise was over before it could start. 82's Conan the Barbarian was a commercial and critical success, but without John Milius returning to the director's chair, the follow-up Conan the Destroyer lost its way and ended up in the much more fantastical and comedic tone that bombed both commercially and critically. The next film that would attempt to capitalize off the Conan novels was Red Sonja, starring Brigitte Nielsen, and which featured Arnold Schwarzenegger in a definitely not Conan role. He was originally intended to play his iconic barbarian in a cameo, but just before filming, the producers lost the rights. Thus, when Arnold showed up on set, his character had been renamed Kalidor. The underhanded approach to filming permanently fractured Schwarzenegger's relationship with producer Dino De Laurentiis, and to add insult to injury, Red Sonja was the biggest bomb of the franchise. And thus, the legacy of Conan languished and would never fully recover. During the late 90s, there was an attempt at mounting a King Conan film, titled King Conan, Crown of Iron, but it folded due to Schwarzenegger's 2003 gubernatorial victory. After this, a revolving door of big-name directors attempted to take on the prospect of a new Conan film, including a returning Milius, the Wachowskis, and Robert Rodriguez. However, the rights eventually ended up at Millennium Films. After attaching Vin Diesel as the star and Brett Ratner as the director, the project quickly began taking shape. However, Ratner would leave over budgetary concerns, and Diesel would bow out to star in more Fast and Furious films. You don't turn your back on family. And it was here that Millennium decided to take a big swing. They needed to get the picture into production before their rights lapsed, so they hired Marcus Nispel in June of 2009. The director of the Texas Chainsaw remake and Pathfinder seemed like a great person to take over the project. With a keen visual sensibility and a penchant for grounded fantasy, he seemed to be a shoe-in. However, Marcus Nispel would be the misstep that would simultaneously get the film greenlit and also doom it to the Walmart $5 DVD bins. The story for this version of Conan the Barbarian features one part Conan origin story and one part a mythically infused, we've got to go collect a bunch of items, video game movie plot. We follow Jason Momoa, who was primarily known as the actor from Stargate and Baywatch at this time, as Conan, and a well-cast but underwritten supporting ensemble that includes Stephen Lang, Rose McGowan, and Rachel Nichols, as they all vie for control of a mythical mask that had been broken into multiple pieces. That doesn't sound too bad, right? That sounds like a solid cast and a tropey fun adventure movie plot. Conan doesn't need to be Shakespeare after all. Only problem is, the film is kind of a mess, and the main problem is Jason Momoa. While Jason Momoa is currently a popular megastar with charisma for days, in this film, he's one note, and that note is not very Conan. Then what? I want your head. Ironically, if the Jason Momoa of today could travel back in time and replace himself in this movie, he'd make a great Conan. But the guy who's in this movie just kinda says things in a low, whispery voice and then shouts stuff when it seems appropriate. Prisoners of Mesantia! The key to your freedom sits in your captain's gut. And also, why can't people say Conan correctly in this film? Conan! Conan, please! Conan left Samaria. It's Conan, 
This really shouldn't be that hard, he's the titular character. Many of the problems with the film lead back directly to the director, Marcus Nispel. The tone of the movie is basically just a living tribal tattoo, which isn't really the vibe you want from a Conan movie. It's so self-conscious about being a grounded, plausible reality with fantastic elements in it that it almost feels ashamed by the otherworldly things in the picture. Additionally, multiple sources connected with the film have suggested that Nispel has a keenly visual mind but had no story sense, which caused the film to capsize as they were were making it. When watching the movie, you might notice that all the scenes don't seem to flow into each other. They feel like separate and distinct sequences that then stop and then we pick up with our characters later, in other places. Well, that's because as they were making the film, Nispel started to change the story as they went. The first act is roughly what the script intended, primarily because the film set in Bulgaria had already been constructed. This is all the Conan as a young man, his origin sequence, up to about when his village is attacked and his father is killed by Stephen Lang's highly forgettable villain. However, as the shooting progressed, Nispel invented new locations, scenes, and set pieces. He was constantly battling with the producers of the project over how the story was unfolding, and his main solution was to just add sequences and elements to what they were creating. This problem got so bad that, apparently, the film's co-screenwriter, Sean Hood, was flown out to Bulgaria in order to work day and night to attempt to write new pages utilizing Nispel's ideas. This led the whole film to have a jolting, stopping, and starting rhythm to it. Upon release, Conan the Barbarian was a flop. It only made 10 million opening weekend and it only pulled in roughly 48 million during its entire theatrical run, which isn't even half of the film's purported $90 million budget. Unfortunately for everyone involved, Jason Momoa would not be anointed King Conan. We all know what happened next, though. Momoa would go on to play another very Conan-esque role as Khal Drogo in Game of Thrones, which proved to be his breakout part. Daddy, please! Ground for King. Since the release of 2011's Conan, there have been a considerable number of attempts at getting Conan or Conan spin-off characters into their own movies. A Thulsa Doom project headed by Jaiman Hansu, a Red Sonja picture starring Amber Heard, a Conan TV project, and a Red Sonja film starring Rose McGowan that made it far enough along that it got a teaser poster released at Comic-Con. However, the greatest Conan film almost produced was Legend of Conan a revisitation of that long dangling idea of Arnold returning to the role of Conan for a King Conan story. In October of 2012, just a mere year after the release of Conan the Barbarian, Deadline reported that Universal Pictures had struck a deal for Arnold to return to the role for what would be the final Conan film in the original franchise. What wasn't made public at the time of the Deadline press release was that the story for Legend of Conan would be loosely based on the novel Legend written by British writer David Gimmel and published in 1984. The story follows an aging barbarian king who must defend his kingdom one last time after discovering there are hordes of outlanders attempting to invade his domain. Slowly, the film started to lose momentum over the four years that Universal had the rights to the project. Various producers that were attached to the project were called away to work on higher profile projects and everything stalled. The death knell for the script was when Universal President Jeff Kirschenbaum left the company, and none of the other execs picked it up. It floundered in the studio's sea of projects. Ultimately, Conan continues to be a highly commercial and successful franchise, but the goal of a movie franchise has eluded him. It's just failure and false starts one after another. Is this due to the fact that the first film was so fantastic, or that Arnold in the role is so iconic, or that it's just really hard to find big bodybuilders who can act? Maybe. Or maybe it's just the simple fact that all the other attempts at staging more Conan have overlooked what made the Howard stories work in the first place. He's a barbarian, yes. Sometimes he's heroic, but the character of Conan is flawed, brutal, and complex. Something none of the attempted film adaptations want to touch with a 10-foot pole for some reason. Well, that's all we have for this episode of Nerdstalgic. What do you think? Will a King Conan movie ever get made? Comment below and let us know your thoughts. As always, please like and subscribe for more nerdstalgic videos just like this.